Welcome to another episode of Out of the Blank Podcast. I'm here with Ian. What's up, buddy? My favorite, I guess. Would you consider it alcoholism, but you're doing a podcast that's on whiskey, so it's okay, right? Uh, well, well, I think the two are independent of each other. Uh, I, I don't believe I suffer from alcoholism because, uh, quite often the only times I drink is on the show. <laughs> I don't, I don't do a lot of drinking, uh, every year, like once in a while I will, uh, I'll have, you know, one or two, I really enjoy whiskey, which is why I'm able to maintain, you know, 174 bottles, I think right now, uh, that are mostly That's full. A lot of whiskey. <laughs> it is, it is. I love it. Uh, all the variances and, and different things. So I don't believe, uh, I don't believe it's, it's alcoholism for me, but I do really, really like it. <laughs> I was just curious. Cause like, like I talk to people, you know, the conversation, that whole thing, but I don't talk in my everyday life. So I'm like, only if it's recording. I'm like, I feel like that's with you and like whiskey. It's like, only if we're recording, it's gotta be recorded. <laughs> like at a bar, you just pull out like a little zoom handheld quarter. Like, Hey, hang on a second. I got to record before I can start. Oh, not even no. When when it's uh the phone stays away at the bars because uh, the the whole like social aspect. Um, I hate the fact that we have to do everything through a computer right now. You know, um, if I if I could, I would have a round table of guests every day, and then would probably suffer from alcoholism. But uh, but I would have folks constantly here uh, in person and focusing on on them. I only focus on the screen because that's the only way you and I can talk. <laughs> I know it's everybody kind of seems to be harping on COVID and everything. And it seems like, Oh, this was just the thing that was going to be brief. But like, what would you can say you missed the most about like maybe something you took for granted? Cause I like asking people like kind of what they uncovered about themselves. And then also at the same time, I like asking what do you, what do they miss the most? Cause I believe like we would neglect things on an everyday basis. So it's like, I miss, you know, communication with people when it comes to like, not having to worry about like when you go out to eat dying even though i never went out to eat that's the weird thing about it is like everyone misses something but they hadn't done it in years so then like it's like wait a minute now that you don't have the option to do so is when you miss it it's like somebody tells you you're allergic to shellfish and you go buy a lobster because you're like i can never have shellfish again or you go the, the complete opposite way and you had your, your duty to free every single lobster from the grocery store and, and set them back into the wild. Dude, yeah. First of all, that was my experience of going to a zoo when I was a kid was when you walked into a food line and there was a fucking lobster tank. I would walk by that thing. I'm like, we're in a magical paradise. And my dad was sitting in the corner. I bet some guy probably walked up to him was like, yo, is your kid like okay in the head? <laughs> and my dad's just like, yeah, he's, he's fine. He's, he's having the time of his life right now. We don't even need a Six Flags the store employees come up and say hey if he starts looking at the tank he's out of here <laughs> <laughs> i just cleaned that yeah yeah um uh, hugs uh, that's an easy one for me i miss i miss hugs i'm a very uh outwardly affectionate kind of guy um i, I have personal space i love human contact and and that's just uh that's just who i am so so that was one of the big things you know hugs hugs kill people now and and that that was the hardest pill to swallow. So my family's been receiving all of my affection because you know we live together every day. But uh, I have I have don't tell anybody. I have snuck in a couple here and there. You know I know it's socially unacceptable right now to hug people. But you're you're telling me you started a secret hug society. Well, the first rule of the hug society is we don't talk about the hug society. <laughs> Because, you know, that was the thing, though, like you would go out on the street or something and some dude would be holding a shirt. And it was a big thing in my town, I think, a couple of years ago, around the time YOLO was huge. Like everybody was screaming, you only live once. And I'm like, yeah, but you can make that a long life or you can make it a short one, depending on your actions. And they're like, no, don't tell me different. I'm like, OK. <laughs> but there were things that um, T-shirt factories are a couple of attractions we have on the boardwalk. Where there's always like a piercing store and right next to that's a lemonade stand. And right next to that's a freaking tat or T-shirt store or something where you get your face airbrushed on a T-shirt. It's yeah. a vacation town. So bear with me. But free hugs, free kisses, all these shirts that were created. Same thing. Come at me, bro. That was a big thing. It was like, we're conflicted. I don't know if I want to be a pissed off person today where it says, come at me, bro. Or do I want to be a lover today and wear my free hug shirt? It was a big divide between people. But I'm like, <laughs> you used to see those people literally saying free hugs or holding a sign out. You would see people just walk up and give them a hug. Ah, that can never be done again. I wonder how those people are managing. I, 
well, I, I'm one of those people that, you know, I never owned the shirt, but, uh, but that was, uh, that was my thing. And, uh, and that sucks, you know, a conversation, I can't tell you how many times, you know, pre COVID we would go into the city and we're down there just hanging out. And I, I love people. I do love people. I don't love when people are like in mass around me, but, uh, just crazy like you, you know, you do it through podcasting, your, your connections to just random people through all walks of life. So I would do that on the street in New York city or, or down in central park. And, and, and it would usually end in a hug or, or a handshake or something, you know, some form of, of human touch at the end of the conversation, because we, you know, um, amidst a million people, we talk to each other. The Staten Island Ferry was another one I could always find. And uh, half the time is because we were drunk. We, we only rode the Staten Island Ferry when we were drunk, but, uh, and I'm, I'm very social when I'm drunk. Makes the, uh, the ferry the best thing about anything is just being drunk for it. Are you kidding yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But, you know, you strike up conversations and it's a, you know, it's about a 20, 15, 20 minute ride across. And, uh, and at the end of that, they got to go on their way and I got to catch the ferry back to the the city because that's where the train is. So, uh, so, you know, there was, there was always a a hug or, you know, dapped up or something like that. And that's, man, I, I miss that shit. Now people are like, they look at each other, like they're dangerous. You know, they're, they're a, a potential, something. And I'm, I'm guilty of that too. I'm not, I'm not saying other people are, Oh, it's about, you know, I, I do the same thing. I, I found myself even last night <laughs> talking to a couple of folks, like, can you back up just a little bit for me? <laughs> like, There's one uh, thing I think that really sucks about having you on my show is I can never get good government talking because you work for the government. So it's like, I can't, <laughs> I can't go freaking insane without getting your thoughts on things, but I've been thinking about this. Um, Recently, I was listening to a podcast that came out in like 2015, and they were talking about like the unemployment rate, which is crazy. There's so many amount of people being unemployed. And then I'm thinking, well, with the virus, how many people are unemployed now? We have a large amount. But surprisingly, there's a, a dramatic drop and then there's a dramatic increase and now everybody's focusing on well our unemployment rate is, is 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 getting better it's getting amazing i'm like is what type of what what are we doing is this a conspiracy theory that you just made up this coronavirus i don't understand what what's going on here like you everyone was complaining about the unemployment rate and how the government's been doing a crappy job about it and then now we see the biggest drop ever where people are calling the unemployment line and just millions of numbers of people are just calling and never getting through. Then we see this giant increase of everybody getting jobs again, because after all this long break, we're starting to come back to work. And it's like, everybody's focused on the positive side of that. I'm like, hang on a second. Let's not, we're neglecting a lot of things going on right now. So if I was going to offer you money, if I was going to offer you all the power um, you're, we're going to put you in the presidential seat and we're not talking about the debate, but I'm putting you in the presidential seat. All right. You're not, you're not, you don't have dementia like Biden and you don't have <laughs> weird, crazy hair like Trump, but I'm going to give you a choice to decide what should be fixed first. What would you consider in your mind and your relation, your personal experience should be fixed? Cause I look at things like our fucking education system fixed stuff i look at that like when it comes to our education system is like we're basically breeding people with a low level of intelligence not saying everybody out there's stupid but i'm saying we're not teaching fundamentals and facts and then people end up finding out information later and getting pissed off same thing with george washington all these other types of things and i believe abraham lincoln you can he got assassinated obviously by john wilkes booth but i believe there was a bigger government thing in that but i'm saying like there's so much shit that's yet to come out there's still more shit coming out a dude wrote a book that took him 20 years talking about the manson case how the government was giving him drugs to take his victims down it's a great book that's what i'm saying is can we just be honest and truthful in our history and let people know the real nitty gritty of stuff? Because I guarantee you, that's what people are interested in. People love horror films. People love the thing. And a lot of the stuff that's happened through our history is not to look at it as horror, but to look at it more on the lines of that's an uneducated point of view. Uh yeah, so education, fixing education, that's a that's a huge broad stroke. I would I would have to narrow it down. Uh, what are we globally competitive, right? Um, that's that's how we stay uh, uh, relative and peaceful with everybody. I think we remain uh, our, our global competitiveness remains in place. So we have to figure out the jobs to the, what's going to keep us there. 
and then we tailor our education to that and with an asterisk right um i i because i'm a history guy and i'm I'm biased to shit uh we we teach history but we teach a little bit more history we put history in a lot of times you, you see history programs get thrown in with like the band and the fucking you know uh, the basket weaving class and shit like that right Art. history history needs to be up right next to science and math uh, in my point uh, in my point of view right so it all so, goes down to the color of the folder that you used for the class Mine was yeah. orange. Well, uh, what were those those binders that had the Velcro and the fucking colors and shit on them? What were those called? They had a name. Oh, shit. You know what I'm talking about, right? And Velcro then in, inside binders. those binders that you had the freaking, your colored folders, or you had, it wasn't like just colored. You had like crazy <laughs> design folders and shit, right? Like with like just, characters or. I just remember cartoons. my teacher was like, do you have a three ring binder? I'm like, it's 3.5. She's like, you need a three ring. I'm like, what's the extra 0.5? If anything, yeah. and I know by any woman, they would like an extra 0.5 inches. <laughs> and, and he go, <laughs> and they're like, hang on a second. Are we, you need are we a, going down that road right now? <laughs> it's, it's not by school standards. You need a three in, or three ring binder, three inches, whatever. I'm like, look, it's cheaper and I get more for my buck. It's like when you get a large soda at McDonald's, it's like two, it's like what, 175. And then the extra large is like 185. It's like, just pay the extra 10 cents and you get way more for your, your dollar there. I'm like, I'm just, look, I'm not a rich, I don't come from a rich background. I'm trying to make sure I have enough room in my binder. I don't want you telling me later, I need to get an extra folder with it. Goes, it's classic three inch or nothing. And I'm like, Bet you lived your life on three inches, haven't you? That's why you're so pissed off and so worried about the three inches. Like, it's just that, this mentality. I have a theory I want to throw at you because I've been waiting to do this for a while. So recently in a podcast, I had discovered a weird theory, and I want you to stick with me on my theories because you already dis, disingenuined, whatever you want to say, disin, disemboweled my I am legend theory. <laughs> I'm still going to keep bringing that up. Every time we talk, it's going to land on that. You're so mad, man. <laughs> I mean, give me credit. I had I had a point of view, and I was joking around, and next thing you know, it came out to be true. And now I'm like, if you were a germaphobe before coronavirus, you're just gone. You're lost in the ether. Nobody's ever bringing you back. Like, there's no amount of therapy or anything that could fix that. You'd be like, I'm right. I told you. I Everybody, I told you. I was staying away from germs before it was cool. Same thing with the coronavirus thing. I was joking around. I'm calling Mr. Rogers. I'll keep saying it on this podcast. People are listening. You know it. Um, but imagine if we change the color of money. So if we change the color of money from green to a different color, like red or blue, would we hold less worth to it? It seems like the factor of the way I'm relating it is green means go. Green means yes. Green mm -hmm. means yeah. It's very attractive to our eyes. And we've associated green with everything that means acceptance. So people always want to make more and more and more and more and want to spend it just at the same rate. So I'm thinking if we change it to a color that's like red, blue, maybe even an orange, we would hold less worth to it and be, I guess, less willing to spend it, such as like in Canada, their money's a different color and they don't hold it over somebody else's life. You know, they're very, very cautious with their money when it comes to some things, but they don't hold it to bar, like closer to our hearts. So the color I think has a lot to do with it and and also word association too, because now, um, you know, let's stay in the, well, I mean, it's, it's in the black when you're talking about a ledger, but um, you know, going green environmentally conscious right so we're using that green as a good thing there so green becomes that that repetitive excessive you know good word to use uh hey buddy and one of the things you know uh not so much anymore but we used to use hey you green um and you know green signifies that you are um supplied and and ready to to go fight and and do your job you know um and then there's other colors to say that we're we're not so ready. But green again, it's that indicator that everything's good. So I, does it would it affect how we feel about money? I don't know. Um, other countries take very good care of their money. We throw it up, we wad it up, we shove it down strippers' pants, we freaking do crazy shit with it, right? Um, other countries won't even like when we, I was in Thailand. I don't know where you're stripping, but I'm getting coins, my good man, I'm tossing a nickel in that thing. <laughs> you cheap 
bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I got to look, man. I got to make it last. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Uh, anyway, um, yeah, this, I'm not going to disclose any any more about that. But the uh, so when we were in Thailand, I, I did I treated the money that I got. I, I did a you know a conversion, and I went to go pay for something, and the guy's like, "No," and I'm like, "What do you mean, no? Like this is your money. Take your money." He's like, "No, look," and he points to like there was a crease in the corner. He's like, "I'm not I'm not taking that." So I had to find a, a crisp, clean dollar, you know. And these guys like take great care of their money and won't accept it if it's like all wrinkled or anything like that. And they won't accept American money either. If it's that same way, they want those, those crisp clean bills. So they value it, you know, a little bit more, but you know, and that's a, a tangent there, but the, the color, I think I, maybe it might, it, it might affect more so how we handle it than how we, than how we think about it. But if we're changing how we handle about it, obviously there's a mental shift in how we, uh, what we think about it. So I don't know. I'll never forget, the, the, like, because I'm a big guy on, like, I just heard this recently on the, like, that one same podcast from 2015 where they're talking about school lunches, for instance, like, kids should get free lunches, um, especially if you can't afford it. Um, from someone that had that, I would have to say, like, I, I had a $5 bill one time and I went to go pay for, like, an extra thing for my meal or something. And it, like it was stapled together. Like I had to staple it and tape it and do all these things to it. And the woman looked at it and she goes, this is defacing government property and that's illegal. And I'm like, so I can't spend, it's just blank money now. But it's like, if we can make it that blank because it's damaged or something, then why are we holding it so accountable that we can't be able to buy things with it anymore? And then turning it into a illegal thing where defacing government property is a huge thing. It's like, I wonder how many people now are really literally pissing on money just for the factor of it. Like that was a big thing back in the day, but we don't even realize was counterfeiting bills. People were printing their own money and there was always, I would see every time I went to the store, someone would check my $20 bill or something and making sure it was like clean money i'm like hold on a second i'm not a i don't have the intelligence to counterfeit i don't i don't understand but it, it was a huge thing it's like it's weird to see how our shifts have gone through time yeah and the counterfeit i mean i, I still get that and there's a lot of places now that won't accept uh well i think they might have to do more so with cash shortage than than other places but even before then um i tried to i, I was at home visiting once and, and i was at a little caesar pizza place trying to buy a bunch of pizzas that's your um, first fucking and, mistake dude that is your first oh, one. Oh, uh, see this detroit tigers hat on my head no no uh, i ain't wrong on this one my friend but anyway little we'll, we'll get to that in just a sec oh yes that's uh, a pizza, cardboard pizza, pizza dude right but when you're feeding 40 people it it's the best pizza ever um right because you get hot and ready's and it's five bucks and it's freaking awesome so I, I if you're expecting around, like the church with the collection hat and tell everybody to talk five dollars <laughs> and like yo or we got to get some dominoes yeah if you're expecting gourmet pizza out of five bucks then then your expectations need to be adjusted just a little bit but anyway so i go to try to pay um with a 50 dollar bill and the lady's like we don't we don't accept those and I was like, what do you mean? It's legal U.S. tender. What do you mean you don't accept this? She's like, we don't accept bills over 20. And I'm like, well, I don't have that. I want to give you cash. And, and she's like, no, we, we've had an issue with $50 bills. We're not, we're not accepting them anymore. And I was like, is this, is this America? Like, <laughs> what? You're, you're not, you're telling, you are refusing to accept legal U.S. tender. And she's like, and, and she's like, sorry. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I mean, unfortunately we, <laughs> we, we had to feed the folks. So, uh, so I had to go break a 50. I, I don't even remember. I, probably over the gas station, I think. Gas station didn't give two shits. Why the fuck is Little Caesars being that way? And it's not. Uh, Little Caesars is a great company. Mike Gillich is doing some great stuff. Uh, go Tigers. Go Wings. Uh, but uh, I don't want to piss off the Little Caesars you know, empire. They're cold, dude. I'll <laughs> so, piss them off all day. I don't care. <laughs> all right. But, uh, but yeah, it was, it was this particular, you know, this particular store that, uh, that and it, that really did. I, I was... I was so pissed that they weren't taking my legitimate American money. And I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I, was, I, was I th happy. think the shift in the world with a lot of tension that's going on is it's shifting way too fast. Like it took TV mm -hmm. and all these things to like fix, like after 10 years of things already being changed, like having a dad and dad on camera, having a mom and mom on camera. Like we see that now, but that was so late to the game on media. Like it was just, and that's, I guess that happens to do with production value, but like, can we bring back some of the old stuff where it would maybe, I guess, 
help us ease into a transgression into how fast society is progressing. I know that sounds like a long haul for a short drink of water, but like if you look at like back in the day going into a store, they had the Slurpee machines, dude. You used to be able to go up to like the Subway or uh, we'll even say Little Caesars if you're shopping at Target like a savage. Um, you be able to walk up there and be like, can I get the, the Coke or the Blue Raspberry? okay like that was the thing like you could get that with a pizza hot dog a pretzel whatever and then you could do your shopping and stuff but like you don't see a whole lot of that anymore like even the classic polar bear and i feel like they just took the polar bear out because it was depressing people like there's a lot of stuff they did did actual studies on where it's like why isn't that a thing anymore it's like well it caused a lot of mass depression because people couldn't stop thinking about the polar bear and then also we had to take santa claus off a lot of stuff like coke doesn't even use santa anymore because of the fact of some people don't believe in christmas and it's like hold on a second who's getting offended at that like i'm not jewish but when i see uh, candles and stuff or people are celebrating hanukkah i don't get offended i'm just like okay it's not my it's not my cup of tea and christmas is one of those holidays where uh, that what you said i'm with you it doesn't make sense to me because christmas is a conglomeration of so many different uh, traditions throughout so many different cultures and and Christmas like how we view Christmas now is 100% American made and it happened between 1815 and 1840 what we the the Christmas that we know of and watching that progression Stephen Niesenbaum did oh my god it's called the battle for Christmas phenomenal study on on Christmas as a whole and and watching the progression right and how we view that we we grabbed everything and it happened in new york and philadelphia where the two major hubs where christmas was created and you had two very big uh culture beds there to where where they they developed independent things and then they moved it together and the christmas we we celebrate now was really more of a social construct thing than it was to celebrate any sort of holiday or religious event you know, we know Jesus was probably born in September. So I just found out Jesus this. had a Twitter. Like, I don't know if you saw my tweet recently. I was like, holy crap, you have a Twitter? So does Satan. Uh, and they're, sometimes they go at each other and it's freaking hilarious. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's great. Um, I, Twitter's, Twitter's lots of fun. I enjoy I enjoy watching. You Twitter. did the weirdest yeah. thing, which was saying something positive on Twitter. I was like, wait a minute. Are, am, is this still the same app? <laughs> He was he's shouting out people. I'm like, hang on a second. This is this is Twitter. We don't we don't do nice things here. We we tweet at people and hate them for it. Be the change, man. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, okay. I, I, I don't know where that came from. That was, that was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I had a thought in my head and then I lost it. Right on. But yeah, so I'm with you with, with the whole Christmas thing. Like, you know, why why are we mad? Um, why what are we upset about? Because Honestly, you know, Santa comes from Bell's Nickel, who is a terrifying figure that would like, you know, uh, more uh, pagan than anything else. And <laughs> so, so Jesus and Santa have no connection whatsoever. The the celebration, you know, the solstice celebration goes in line with. If you notice, there's all of these. They all they all stem from festivals, right? They, these these New Year festivals. It's that about were held coming together. Cultures. I love this the October season. I love this whole thing because the whole aspect is we're coming close to the holidays. About the experience that you have with people that you love. Okay, that is a huge yep. thing. Okay, um, when it comes to Christmas, though, I mean Hitler tried to cancel Christmas, dude. Like that's a big thing for a year and a half. He tried to take uh santa out of christmas and he did instead of making gingerbread cookies and airplanes or no, instead of making gingerbread cookies and like nice little stars or whatever he ended up making airplanes and everything like that and there's literally a card where it says happy holidays or whatever and it's hitler with a little girl and they're baking cookies together like he changed the whole idea of christmas but he could never take christ out of christmas he could never take out jesus or any of the correlation to do with that people just wouldn't allow that they're like fine you could take santa Santa's important. It's important for little kids. It's important to have that mystical miracle thing. It's important to have this innocence in life. And from someone that talks to a lot of people, I can tell by looking at someone if they have seasoning to them, if they've experienced stuff. And I can tell when someone's just blank, like you haven't had a, like a lot of stuff that you hear and like, um, I'm the number one, I'm all this type of like macho, macho talk, trying to do as much as you possibly can, trying to get your name out there. It, it's not a bad thing, but 
a lot of those people haven't experienced anything like just I, are blank cells to me. I look at them. I'm like, yo, like you really want attention, but you haven't really done a whole lot. Like it's, but it's weird because then the super seasoned people, like the people that have experienced a lot of shit are like, don't want any of it. They don't want any attention. You most of the time, or they write a motivational book on it and sell it to you for five ninety nine. But um, like even with like Christmas, it's important like Santa Claus and all this stuff. And just the holidays in general, it doesn't have to be just Christmas. Eventually, you know, you're going to tell your kid Santa Claus isn't real. And that's probably around the time you're pissed off that some fat guy's getting all the credit for all the gifts that you've been buying. Um, I look at that as a parent. I'm like, yo, I'm like, I'm going to straight up tell you, I bought this. Like I worked hard as shit for that money. And I bought you that rock band drum set. You're kidding me. If I'm going to give it to some fat guy. But I get the idea of that. And I think that's the important part of any of these beliefs is that you, you need something like that in your life too, because you can't just think that it's all just empty. You can't just think you live and you die. Once you start thinking in that mindset, it becomes a really dark, closed thing. But as we're shifting so dramatically as people, like it seems like we're really trying to change, like turn up the gear to 10 when we started at level one, like straight to 10. Yes. Any society that has started... You, I correlate it to cars. Let me put it this example. So the movie Cars, Lightning McQueen, when he's repaving that road, the very first time, what did he do? Oh, he he did it fast, and yeah. uh, and it ended up looking like shit. And exactly, and then he had yeah. to re-go over it, and then he had to do it a second time, and he took his time with it. That's what I think we should be doing with everything. Work on one thing. Work on one fix, one change, anything that uh, people can do come in on unify on instead of different battles everywhere it's like everybody has their own battle going on it's like hey if we want change let's all work and build that first block and lay it down the pyramids weren't built in a day rome wasn't built in a day why are we trying to rush all this right now and i believe it's because for so long we've been thinking in a whole other mindset or letting it fly by i'm like that doesn't mean we have to speed up let's do this and let's do it right Let's make sure that we're not going to end up into an era where we destroy ourselves. Let's try and come together and bring in this new era of reformation, I would say. Absolutely. And I, I think we can we can look at that. Just touching back on the Christmas thing real quick. We're not allowing our kids to develop and and really enjoy imagination. Their 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 ability to have a a wide open imagination to where they have this fantasy of this guy riding on a sleigh pulled by reindeer you know um we're hitting our five-year-olds with physics like phys hey according to physics that's that's absolutely uh, impossible well uh, my five-year-old doesn't need to fucking know that right let my kid have this imagination let them let them build those those areas in their brain um that's going to foster that that creative spark somewhere else down the road you know, eventually, sure, we're gonna come to the reality and be like, no, Santa's not real. We get that. But right now, no, take no, believe that shit. Uh, let your brain go wild. Go, go crazy. Give the reindeer personalities. You know what I mean? Like fostering creative minds and imaginative minds. And, you know, we're look at look at education, you know, if we're gonna, well, let's go back. Uh, kindergarten, my when my youngest daughter went through kindergarten, she had like, uh, 50 sight words. She had like all this, she had homework in kindergarten. I fucking drank milk and took a nap. You know what I mean? Like, uh, so, Yo, so there's this, that's what we need to bring back. We're talking about things to bring back nap time. Nap Holy time. crap, dude. Hell Let me yeah. tell you something. All these people that are like not sleeping for like days and days and days, much like me and you are kind of going Robbie from out of the blank. Yep. <laughs> but, um, seriously, freaking nap time was amazing when I was, cause I remember that's, and I give, this is why I say I don't think I could ever be a parent is because I remember having to take a nap and then crying where you're like, <laughs> you had to take a nap. And my dad would just sit there and sleep right beside me. And then he just, even if I was staring at him, waiting for him to like, give me that, like, come on, wake up, wake up, wake up. Now nah, he was out like a light, dude. That's what I'm saying. It's like, we all need nap time, dude. That was so important because I woke up refreshed. I felt like I wasn't upset as I was before. And I think that happens to do with a lot with media too. People aren't sleeping because Netflix is too damn good. <laughs> yep. And then we get mad at Netflix because it asks us if we're still watching. Of course we're still watching. There's 27 episodes left. Yeah. I have to finish this. And they're 45 yeah. so, minutes an episode. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, all of that it plays into the speed thing that you were talking about going fast. Um, Rome wasn't built in a day, but it collapsed in a day. 
Um, and why did it collapse in a day? Because everybody inside of it stopped working for it. Uh, you know, the 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 self uh, permission, the self, uh, you know, everybody wanting to be victorious. And, and all of this connects to, to everything you said already, because now, you know, you're talking about these these people wanting to come out and be number one. Um, we see that, you know, with with podcasters, you know, they, they come out and uh, they're they're all about, you know, uh, promotion, promotion, promotion and and growing their brand. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But, um, you know, it, it feels like they're skipping the networking step. You know, let's let's get let's get started. Let's have really shitty audio. Let's have really crazy freaking dialogues. Um, and then let's 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 grow and evolve and get better. You know, you listen to your first show and then listen to your shows now. It's it it's a completely different thing. Um, and you took the time throughout your your journey to progress. You didn't go out, you know, bef before your first recording and buy a freaking five hundred dollar you know microphone and a uh, you know a sound studio and all this crazy shit, you know. And so, and I'm just using podcasting as an example. This could translate into anything. It, it, taking your time to learn your skill, and that's something we see in the military. Is uh, we have individuals that that promote very very fast. They don't get to know their job at this level before they're put into the next level. And and without being proficient at this level of task, they get thrown into the next one. And so they're already they're already behind the curve, and now they're getting thrown into positions of of greater leadership and more more responsibility. And when they didn't even know how to do it, you know, a step back, and and it happens. And and, and I, I've used the military, but that's that happens across the board. You see that in in you know companies in Fortune 500 companies. Now that's why there's such a big emphasis on on leadership development because here are these freaking upstart you know super brain kids that don't know how to talk to people or or get people to motivated to to produce stuff. So. And it's just super fast. So learning and becoming a professional at each level, let me learn this level and be, be perfect at this level. And then I'll step forward and I'll add to that level and I'll get even better at the next level. You know what I mean? And then before I move it's, on to that. It's the factor of too many things are instant in life now that we've just been associated with everything needs to be right now, right now, right now, right now. It's like, hold on a second. The process is the point. Life is like a sandcastle, okay? It takes so long to build this fucking amazing thing, but it can easily be washed down by one fucking wave. And one yeah. quick second could all be gone. So it's like people need to understand and not be upset that that's what all, all my stuff is gone. You can rebuild or find something else. It's, the, it's this whole thing is that it's really, really hard when people want to be in that limelight and they want to be just like everybody they see on TV and everything that we do purchases, everything is so instant. You know, you swipe your card instant, you know, you give cash instant. Everything has been like programming us to do this instant thing. Yo, back in the day, you couldn't just send a text to your friend and say, hey, man, coming over for dinner. I heard, uh, let's say whatever, uh, you know. I don't know, like we're having pork and beans. Okay. You sent that by fucking messenger pigeon three days in advance <laughs> to make sure that shit got there. Or you had yep. some dude on a horse deliver that thing. The only thing that still stands to the point of where you have to wait for shit is when you order something, you still have to wait that day or you still have to wait whatever for that package to come. But it's so nuts. Like we, there are things that should be instant that really help us out in jams. Your car breaks down. Well, it's going to be about uh, probably towards the end of the days when it's going to be fixed. Why is that? Well, I got to order the part from the guy and they got to deliver it to us. Okay, well, that's good to know that that delivery is freaking right there. That That's great. But what's crazy is, is when you see a delay of like a day or two and they're waiting for the parts, they have to get the parts from the, the store and the store is really like is the Napa that's three doors down. And then you literally watch the guy from Napa like come out and walk over and then come in and give you like your mechanic apart. Look, like I learned they, I learned they, oh hold my God, that power. drives me so nuts. <laughs> I learned they hold all the power. I remember I had a flat tire or I had a nail in my tire and I just made it to the freaking uh, car mechanic. And I literally had work in like an hour. So I was like, guys, I need this done as fast as possible. And the guy just goes, oh yeah, we'll get it done as fast as possible. And he looks at two of his friends that are in the garage with him. And I'm like, oh shit. I just realized you can make me wait here all day. So I go, I'm very sorry for that. I, I acted very, very rude and I apologize. Take your time. They had me fixed up in like 30 minutes. I was like, there you go. See, if I would have sat there and just like, you know, kept yelling and screaming and complaining, people just make you wait. I do the same thing when I'm working front desk. Somebody gives me an attitude, says something of whatever obligatory to me. I immediately just start 
slowly pulling the money out of the register and giving them their change. Like very slowly. Like I'm going to make you fucking wait, dude. Like I, I don't, it's the thing is you got to have the respect thing for people, but the instant payout, this instant thing that life has turned into, it's like, that's not what it is. Everything is a long ass process and you have to trust the process because it works. None of these people, you know, that you see the rock or any of this got there by doing and I hate to compare to celebrities because honestly, that's like the worst comparison, but they weren't, you know, born right into it. And the people that are born into that, they end up going batshit crazy. Like it's this whole thing of like, you got to understand where you came from. That's why I like talking to people that have experienced something, not just like I was in a terrible car wreck or I was in this, just knowing that there's a sense of like humbleness to it, where it's like, I've experienced some stuff. Like you feel weathered a little bit. It's the point of the world. The more you age, the more weathered you become. Sadly, kids nowadays aren't associating, like you're saying, by using, you know, devices and stuff. And we've turn into this new evolved form of media which is amazing what we're doing being able to communicate like this but like texts how many fucking texts do you get where they just go off on the wrong like thing like it the, they, they pull the wrong tone out of it next thing you know you're like what do you mean it's like i just asked if you wanted bread but you read the text and it says do you want bread and then your phone adds motherfucker to the back of it and you're like what do you mean <laughs> it's like i had a dude call me last night um, I had got this call earlier in the day, but I missed it. But it's like every time somebody calls me and I miss it, I'm always like taking a piss. It's the one minute I take a piss through the day or something where it's like, ah, damn it. I didn't bring my phone into the bathroom. Um, cause I believe that's, that's the curse right there. When you bring your phone into the bathroom, you're expecting it to be a while. You shouldn't <laughs> be a while, but, um, I got a call from a guy and I remember I answered it and he goes, stop fucking calling me. I'm like, what the fuck? Like it's it's like midnight right now. And I answer, I'm like, um, bro, it's an automated machine that's using our numbers to call each other. And he goes, yeah, I keep getting a call about the treasury. Um, based on his voice, he sounded like an, a redneck for sure. Um, is that, that's not, that's not mean to rednecks, is it? No. I, I'm not offended in any way, shape or form. I, I use the term. So yeah, no, it's, I, and most of them will own that. Be like, yeah, yeah. Okay, just making sure you got dipped. So redneck. So so this redneck called you and he's like he's all all upset. Yeah, he was upset. He was talking about like hey, I keep getting a call from this number. I'm like, yeah, it's the automated machine uses our numbers and calls each other. And you get a like if you get a random number from whatever and you call it back, it's usually a person picks up hello and it's like, did you just call me? I didn't call you. It's like okay, um, they're just taking people's numbers and going through the list and then automated calling you to buy and do some shit. And I told him that, and he was like, oh, man, I'm sorry, man. I'm like, yeah, dude, it's midnight, Like, and you just called me. He goes, I'm sorry, dude. Uh, how are you doing? And I'm like, do I want to get into a conversation at midnight right now? Like, do I want to do this? And I'm just like, I'm doing all right, man. I'm going to go back to bed. He goes, all right, man, I'm sorry about that, buddy. And he hangs up. I'm like, see, this the, the, it, the world is so weird right now. It's really, really hard to explain. It's always been weird, but like now it's just like uber weird. Or I don't know, even know if we're just more hip to it. One of the the, the weird things, and I don't, I don't remember where I saw this starting from, so I, I don't know where the the origin of it was. But there was this, uh, you know, when everybody went into lockdown back in March and and April, um, there was this this trend where people were changing. Uh, they called them like their phone number family so like the you take the last number of your phone number and then you add one or you subtract one number neighbor yeah i got that and you I got that not even last year i dude i did well okay so i'm behind the times i did that to the number above me and the number below me uh the number above me didn't respond but the number below me did and dude we, we talked for like 30 minutes the fucking number that texted me i'm like what and they're like we're number neighbors i'm like yeah oh and they're like what do you do i'm like i live in ocean city and they go oh i live in salisbury and i'm like oh cool and they're like what do you do and i'm like i do this and i just sent them this is when my podcast was first starting so i sent them a thing on my podcast i hope they're still listening today right on yeah so th that was cool as shit you know just random and I've, you get wrong text messages you know all the time and and i have fun with those especially when they're they're of a more serious tone and so i'll i'll feedback but uh but one of the greatest examples of of what you're saying is it, you know the whole tone and text thing uh, would be our conversation about the whole i am legend thing right you had you no you, you, you were denied. straight up denying me don't even well, give me that shit. you're right because i interpreted your tone as being serious you're like i called it 
this is happening, da 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 da, and here's your information. And I was like, well, I, I didn't catch your. I was your partially joking. serious. I, I was like, holy crap! I was just joking around about the I'm legend <laughs> thing, and it came out that one third of the people that get the vaccine end up developing ser- serious neurological issues. Then I, I sent you an article. And then you started sending voice messages where I could hear your tone, and I'm like, oh, now he's mad. <laughs> I was like, all now right. Now I was pissed like, because I was getting a let's response. Let's dial saying, this down a little bit. You're like, where are the facts? Where are the facts? <laughs> I'm like, then I listened to that episode again. I'm like, all right, where is this article that I told Ian about? And then he says, so that's not neurological issues. And I found it, and then not even like a week later johnson and johnson stopped their vaccine thing and i was like i'm just saying it's an aspect of we want the instant we want the rush i don't think this is going to be over until june i think there's going to be a, a good test around then and then next thing you know we'll be able to actually go back to a sense of actual normalcy now we're not out of normalcy everybody's pissed off at each other and i believe there's people that are never going to want to go back it's really hard to bring people back when you're offering them a higher amount than what their paycheck was per week i'm just saying yeah. i made more in two weeks doing the unemployment thing than i made in uh, whatever two weeks at work so i'm like that's what i'm saying is everything wants to is instant payoff and when you do an instant payoff you make mistakes things get don't you know get overlooked you cut corners schools you know, are built next to a sewage plant all these other type of shit that goes on and i think that's where we need to focus on is you can't start trying to build or fix all these issues when you're still making the same mistakes of a lot of things and that's all the race and all the other stuff aside, all the debate, all the stuff aside, we're not paying attention to a lot of fundamental things that have been going on for so long. You really want to talk about a heated topic that's probably going to piss off some people out there? Fucking religion. It's been talked about for years, the fact of that the, there was a problem in the church when it came to pedophilia. Now everybody's just working on it? Like, how did that slip under the fucking rug? Like, I'm just saying, there's a lot of things that we should be focusing on that need to, like, stop worried about sending a Tesla to space. I don't give a shit about space. I care more about the ocean. I care more about there's stuff on Earth that we have not solved yet. I want to know where Atlantis is. I want to know a lot of things. And it, it all boils down to a factor of what are our priorities. And I think yeah. our priorities are constantly shifting like a thing of Play-Doh, except you don't eat it. You just, we keep morphing it with our hands and that keeps happening. And once you think you're starting to get an actual, like maybe a creation or something like, oh, this is my spaceship galaxy starship. Then somebody comes over, tosses something at you like, yeah, but you could do this. And you go, hold on, I'm going to stop the process. And then I'm going to reform this thing into something else. It's like you give up halfway, finish the process of things and you're going to come to a better conclusion. Right on. The Plato uh, analogy, right? I, but here's the deal: we we need to to join our priorities. Uh, so with the Plato analogy, right? Um, the problem, one of the the additional problems is that um, my priorities are 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 mine, and your priorities are yours, and I'm unwilling to to give on my priorities, and you're unwilling to give on your priorities. So where you and I could get together share priorities and add unique parts and pieces to to our play-doh you know we bring our play-doh blobs together now we have a multicolored starship 3000 that has uh, a galley and a freaking movie theater you know <clears throat> excuse me but we don't do that because this is my starship 3000 um no no you know we we have to be willing to 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 kind of open up and allow other people to not necessarily change our vision. We don't want to like, this is my, this is my Play-Doh. This is my spaceship, but be open to somebody else saying, cool, you're valuing, uh, you know, fuel usage. I'm going to value maxing out the payload. So now I've got a fuel efficient vehicle that maxes out the payload. Talk, you know, let's, let's translate that into the planet. Why are we so worried about space? We have all this awesome science. Why can't we just fix our fucking planet? Let's, well, you, why, you, we're so you, you we're said, so focused on on finding out the answer to the stars when we don't even know where the bottom of our ocean is and what it looks like. Well, you also said the Plato that we, you know, the whole factor of like your priorities are different than my priorities. Then why are we accepting input of somebody else's opinion onto our thing to change our vision of what it is? 
I think there's a way to support and collaborate together, but obviously our priorities are going to be selfish in the fact of there are problems that are going on in our own lives. You know, everybody's got their own issues going on. Everybody's got these different things going on that we consider our priorities, things you need to take care of. You need to take care of your family. I don't have a family, so I don't need to take care of a family. I can just do, you know, worry about myself, worry about whatever I'm dealing with. The issue is, is when you become so selfish that your priorities take over your whole mindset where nothing else can come in. You're supposed to accept opinions. You're supposed to accept maybe some, hey, maybe you should do this. I'll take that into consideration. Not fucking berate the person for giving you maybe an idea or something that might actually end up improving things. You know, it's that idea of things. When you're working to a bigger and better future, it's good to make sure that you're you're covered and safe. But it doesn't hurt to help out others around you as well because if you're just fixing your own life, then somebody else's negative energy is going to end up drowning yours. It's that's what when I look at self care, when I look at all these things, that stuff's important, but it wouldn't be a factor if we could all just learn to be, you know, live in a better world. And I know that's a big thing to cover up a lot of issues that go on, but it's, it's, it's not just a better world. It's a factor of we've been living in this mindset and now we're all starting to notice it. And I think it's because of just how our intelligence has shifted as a population. A lot of things that we don't, or we used to go by and all these things, we turn into a problem today and it's good. It should be fixed. A lot of the things like women having rights, all these other things it should be amazing. The fact that everyone is now starting to actually seem what a little bit of what it seems to be equal, you know, but it's this factor of like, we're constantly still fighting at the neck. We're constantly looking at somebody else and like the whole thing with like, even with masks, somebody's got a tattletale on somebody else for if they don't have their, their, their mask down or something. And they, they like to feed off that energy of that negative energy. It's, um, I have a, you ever see, you've seen clash of the Titans, right? Yes. The one with Liam Neeson. Yes. Once. Oh. So, well, I, like, I'm not super familiar, but I, I have seen it, yes. Well, the basis of it is, like, the gods, they feed off the love and admiration of people, and that's how they survive. That's where they get their power from, is the love and prayers of people. Well, Hades is the one god that feeds off the fear, the death, and the evil. And he's it's like a minor bit of energy. It's not as powerful as the love and admiration. It's like, I can still survive off this. It's like feeding off scraps, basically. If somebody's getting a steak, you're getting the table ends of it. Then when everyone stops believing and loving, then the gods lose their power and Hades is the only one that remains with power because he's learned to feed off their fear and everything, the table scraps. So then he becomes more powerful. I'm like, that's what we're all doing. We're all feeding off of other people's misfortune instead of looking at the positive things. When you see somebody post up a picture on Instagram or something of just bought a new home, oh, you'll see people congratulations. But you know, in their mind, they're secretly like, God damn, I wish I had that. It's this whole jealousy, bitter greed aspect of things. And it's like, how do we annihilate that? Because I think the biggest enemy is not whatever, whatever is in your mind right now is I hate that person. They're evil. I think the biggest enemy is ourselves because it's truly holding us back from the thing that we actually want to do. It, so selfishness, you, you touched on that. That, that. That's an absolute thing. You know, we want... We want these things and <clears throat> celebrating other people. And that's one of the things that I, I love doing is I, I love celebrating people's successes. I just, it, I, I enjoy it. And then when I have a success, I want people to celebrate with me. And, and you do, you get those outliers that, that are, they drop that freaking negative shit, uh, that passive aggressive negative shit, you know, Oh, great job, man. When I did that, I da, 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 da. You're like, okay, cool. Just, just, you know, uh, thanks. <laughs> you know, um, and, and so buying a home, right. I'm so excited when I see my friends buy a home, I want a home. I do. I, I want, I want to put my roots down. I want to stop traveling. I want to freaking just have a place that is mine and, and just be there. But I don't, I don't, the jealousy thing might be there, but, uh, but it's not because I'm not really jealous of them. Uh, and the home that they have, uh, they're, they're just ahead of me where I want to be at the end. And, uh, and I, and I get a little jealous, but my job, I'm able to put that away. And that's like, how do we solve it? How do we fix it? We don't, you know, that's a, that's a, a morals values thing that has to be, a, a, you know, as a society, I don't think we can change that. 
on the whole, right? Um, we can only affect our circles. We can only affect the people in our, our immediate networks. And that's how we honestly, in my opinion, that's how we get the change. We, that's how we get, uh, you know, uh, we throw out positive things on Twitter. We, you know, um, we hype up people, you know, when, when there's a, a moment of a moment of celebration, don't make it just a moment, make it an hour, make it freaking huge. Because uh, people are also because they don't want that negative reaction, people are minimizing their successes. People are afraid to share their successes and their wins because of that negative jealousy mentality that's going to come out and somebody's got a freaking, you know, you're having a great moment. They're having a shitty moment and they want you to stop having a great moment. Because and why would you get something for yourself and you're proud to share it? Like, I remember if I got like a, which rarely ever happened, but I got one honor roll, I think in all my years of schooling and it was like, Oh my Nerd. God. Like it was, the, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. I worked hard <laughs> as shit. I don't count getting like two C's and the rest of B's to be, uh, honor roll but um i got the sticker for it i remember because i was like i got honor roll where's my sticker and they're like it's the last semester we don't give stickers for that i was like i worked so fucking hard all semester to get honor roll so i can get my call of duty world at war video game that my dad promised me if i got honor roll and i got this sticker and this is the main thing i want i said i want the sticker to put on my dad's truck so he can drive around just like all the other kids parents and say my son got honor roll and they're, uh, they're like, sorry, we don't give them that last semester. And then my teacher went out of her way. Oh, Miss Masters, thank you. Um, she went and got me an honor roll sticker and said, I know how hard you were for this. And she gave it to me. I was like, yes. And the next fucking day, when we put that sticker on the car, that weekend, the car got repoed. And I never saw the sticker again. So I was fucking <laughs> heated. No. That's my life. <laughs> and something good happens, and then it's taken away. And then something else happens. But then... Still well, had that shit. video game though, but I was like, I proved like, hey, if I put my mind to it, it's just it wasn't for me. School was, but it comes to that factor of now we're afraid of sharing our successes. We don't want to be the parent with fifteen honor roll stickers on the back of our car. <laughs> we're like this son of a bitch. I am sitting in this line while this whatever school guard cop whatever you want to say is directing me through the flow of traffic when there's no cars in this damn parking lot but there's this guy with the 15 honor roll stickers again 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 all over like it just added on where it's like why don't you get another bumper like why don't you just add more onto the you know get an extended thing like the handicap uh thing at the back of the van but then you see that it's like the parent is definitely proud, but then it comes off show offy. But now that's related to anything, even a small little good, like, hey, guys, today I lived. Today, I uh, I didn't die. I didn't have a heart attack. I didn't get hit by a car. I didn't I didn't get electrocuted by sticking a fork in a toaster. I, I had I, I'm here. I'm breathing and I made it through a day. Let's all be happy we made it through the day. Right. But if you're celebrating the fact that you didn't die because you didn't stick a fork in a toaster, there's other conversations that have to be had. I've that made that mistake <laughs> three times in my life, damn it. Oh, my God. Two times with a fork and one time with a knife. My toast got stuck in the toaster and the thing broke to where I couldn't. I don't blame that on myself. I blame that that we had a shitty ass toaster. <laughs> Oh my God. I love it. I love it. I, I remember my little sister once, right? There was a, uh, a moment where she, uh, she took a quarter, right? And we had this lamp on the desk that was plugged in and turned on. Nobody knew it was on because it didn't have a light bulb in it. She took this quarter and she put the quarter for some reason in the socket. And man, there were sparks and she was on the floor and she was not happy. Um, <laughs> But but there was definitely a, a lesson there because you know you always get told like don't stick forks in the in the you know the outlets or something like that you know and you're like why would anybody why they stick put a the fork safety in caps on well, right because you know why they tell you not to because somebody did and it went really bad <laughs> you know when we moved we moved out to the country when we were living in North Carolina and our backyard backed up to a horse pasture that had a, an electric fence and and kind of this weird social experiment with my kids just to prove a point uh, I was like hey that will shock you don't touch the fence. And they're like, oh, okay. So they all go running out in the backyard. And, and then immediately I just grab my coffee and I'm standing by the window and I'm just watching because I know what's going to happen. Uh, you know, the, the kids walk over and you can see that they're, they're all talking to each other and, and you can almost hear the conversation where they're like, you touch it. No, you touch it. No, you touch it. Well, anyway, they convince uh, our youngest son, Marcus to touch it. And he grabs this thing and it rocks him. And instead of 
uh, letting it go, he actually reaches over and he grabs his brother. <laughs> and so now you just see the two of them go. Whoom. <laughs> and so by convincing the youngest, he reached over, grabbed Micah, and then the both of them got shocked to shit. It was great. But, uh, but the whole mentality behind, you know, uh, hey, don't do this, you know, and, uh, and, and I'm celebrate sorry, I, the I small shit. Yeah, man. Instead yeah, of celebrate, yeah. it doesn't always have to be every time you get a big thing. If you no. just, if you're alive no. today, just celebrate that you didn't you didn't get sick. You didn't, you know, whatever, whatever you want to say. And like I, I joke, <laughs> I've been joking around. I told somebody it might be a bad joke or too soon. I don't know whenever this virus is over. But I'm like, I tested positive. My supervisor's like, what? And I'm like, I tested positive. And she's like, for coronavirus. And I'm like herpes. <laughs> she just like looks at me like what the fuck like oh like oh thank god <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like right i'm like but that's that's a thing you need to you need to celebrate small stuff not getting herpes but the fact that you don't have that celebrate small shit don't go over the don't be the don't be the chick or don't be the guy that's celebrating his birthday month oh i fucking hate that shit don't do it just low key it low key it like wait for that day and happy birthday again to you my friend Thanks, buddy. Because your birthday was recently. Um, but it's I'm that sorry. type of thing. Celebrate small shit. Like, hey, you know what? Today I made it home safe. Today I I I, I worked, but I'm home and I'm relaxing. Today I got a Netflix series I can watch. That's small stuff. It doesn't need to be posted on social media. I don't think that needs to go there, but in your head, change the perspective that you should have on life. A yeah. lot of times we're looking at it like, damn, I need to get this, I need to get this, I need to get this. Do you need that? I keep my bank card in my car. It saves me so much from Dragon City on my phone because of the fact of, do I need that? At the moment I do. But then if I have to walk out to my car and get my bank card and it's like 40 degrees out and I'm in underwear, I'm not doing it. I don't need it that badly. The next day I'm like, well, thank God I didn't buy that. Yeah. It, it also celebrating outwardly. That's, that takes a little bit more force. Um, and we have to kind of adjust ourselves uh, a little bit more so to do that. But celebrating other people is important too, and celebrating you know celebrating with them, joining them in you know you want to you want to call it solidarity or whatever, um, and bumping them up. You know, hey, we we did you know this today. Fuck yeah, you did. That's awesome. Great job. Thank you, you know, or, or just just something. And and the more I think we we go outwardly and we're, we're good to one another, we're genuinely good to one another um, because people can tell fake real fast. You know, we it, it's it's authentic and we reach out. And I think that that's where we save society is, you know, um, good job. I'm so proud of you. Awesome. Well done. Outward. We got to go out. You know, uh, we can't go out until we fix in. Like you're saying, we can't celebrate other people until we start allowing ourselves to celebrate, you know, us and value ourselves. And, but I think once we, we can do that, we make that move, man. Uh, there is an unstoppable force and, and don't go, <laughs> we can't go global, you know, tomorrow, right? Start, start small, start small, hit your networks, get, get the people in your network. Good. And then, and then your network can go out. Um, I affect two people, those two people affect two people. And then pretty soon we've got freaking 50 people that are just driving the train to, to make everybody better. Let's bring back pay it forward. I've been to so many fast food places back in the day and I never got once got paid forward. Nobody ever did that for me, but I did it for other people. That's what I'm saying is don't always expect a, a return don't always expect an exchange it seems like anything happens nowadays somebody needs something from this needs something from that just do it because if it helps somebody else out who cares it ends up turning let me tell you something from all the people i've talked to and from all the like just that the, the help that i don't ever really expect anything back it comes around it's a karmic thing it comes around whether it's somebody like hey thought of you when i thought of this it's like bam like i'll give him a shout out robert rice guy makes amazing hot sauce randomly in the mail without telling me I just get a mail package where it was a couple of stickers and then he got a hat that said biscuit world on it because he knows i like i always say nothing's better than a butter biscuit and like it was that he was like i know you're not gonna wear it but it's the thought that counts and i'm like damn right it is damn right and that's you don't need to mail things to people but at the same time 
just don't expect anything from people. Everybody's expecting that they can get something out of them to climb to the top. And it's like, just fucking do it because it's it's the right thing to do. Nobody's morals are so twisted where, you know, stepping on the throat of somebody else to get ahead or something is is the positive thing. There's no freaking way. And do it without taking a picture and posting it on social media. That's the the moral standing shit that, you know what I mean? If you're going to do something good for somebody, so you're going to do that, that random act of kindness. You're going to pay it forward. Um, keep your phone in your pocket. Don't tell anybody about it. Do it and and keep it to yourself. And that's where that's where I think you know uh, this this uh, it, it's, I won't call it a trend, but there's been a lot of videos of people going out and like in, I, I want to call it entrapment almost. You know, they give a, a homeless guy a hundred dollars in hopes that they're going to catch him buying booze or some shit. And what does he do? He goes and buys food for all of his other homeless buddies. You know, uh, and uh, you know you're going to do something. You're going to make a donation. You're going to do something good for somebody. Do it without your phone. Do it without a video camera. Do it when nobody's watching. And and there is Shia LaBeouf style. Just do it. <laughs> yeah, and I, and that's that's a big deal, man. That's that that means that that is a huge deal because that ensures that our intent is right. That we're doing these these random acts of kindness. That, you know, kindnesses. I don't even know how to say the word, but we're we're doing these random acts um, out of a genuine desire to make somebody's day better and not to glorify ourselves. That's a great so. thing to end on. Well, Ian, thank you for being on my show. Brother, I love chatting with you. It's an honor. Thank you. When am I going to be on the Y Whiskey? Uh, soon. Soon. I've, That's I've got to... Someone doesn't want you on. They say, no, maybe. no. I, I've got a, I've got a, a, a big thing I'm working on and that's really got all of my attention. So um, I've got a, AA. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not see alcoholics. I'm not an alcoholic. I, I you know what I mean? Um, I'm a drunk. Drunks don't go to meetings. So uh, there's, there's the difference, but no, uh, no, I got a, a, something big I'm working on. That's kind of got all of my, my focus and attention going on right now. Uh, well, which promote I where people can find you. Uh, so, uh, uh, why whiskey, uh, on Instagram, uh, whiskey, why on Twitter, I'm on all the plot. Oh, oh, Jesus. I haven't been drinking. I swear to God. I'm on all the podcast platforms. Uh, just, uh, just search why whiskey with a question mark and a whiskey is spelled with an E because, uh, that's what we do here in America. So that's where you can find me. All right. Well, thank you for listening to this episode out of the blank podcast and stay tuned for our next episode.